the only leadership we have seen this week, and indeed the only leadership we have seen in this country since the beginning of the year, is from Peter Dutton. I would have been happy to sit down with him and negotiate a regime that we could pass by legislation that would see these people come back into detention, to see the threat that is imminent, to see the threat that is real to women and children in our country, dealt with and dispensed today. But the Prime Minister has taken a deliberate decision to abandon the Australian people when they most need him. When they most need him. And I think there are many Australians at the moment who are shaking their head in disbelief at a Prime Minister who has the opportunity to address this and has had the opportunity since June to address this so that these people would not have been released in the first place and has chosen other priorities above the Australian public. And what were those priorities of Mr Albanese's? The ridiculous voice referendum which two out of every three Australians comprehensively rejected and which caught Albo and his team, as it were, with their pants down. Out of touch and flat-footed and nothing but petulant excuses telling Australians we're all racists because of how we voted. Then it's straight off overseas for more selfies around the world. A Prime Minister in love with his own image as a globe-trotting summiteer, hobnobbing with the rich and famous. Even Leo DiCaprio doesn't get around as much as this bloke. Back at home, Acting Prime Minister Richard Miles had to go scurrying off to Peter Dutton to work out how to fix the problem of the detainees being released. As Dennis Shanahan wrote in The Australian, quote, Peter Dutton is now running the political and legislative agenda from the opposition leader's office while Anthony Albanese is overseas. In practical and political terms, the Albanese government has been caught with its pants down and handed leadership to Dutton because of its own failure to prepare for an adverse court decision and a complete misreading of the popular mood. End of quote from Dennis. Caught with your pants down once is bad enough, but twice? Oh, hang on, there's a third. <clears throat> exactly a week ago at this time, live on Insiders, Penny Wong landed the Albanese in hot water again with her ignorant and ill-founded undergraduate comments about the Israelis, ceasefires and hospitals in Gaza, which drew the ire of Jewish organisations from around the world. Israel should uh, do everything it can to observe international humanitarian law. I, mm. We have seen a harrowing number of civilians, including children, killed. Uh, you know, this has to end. Uh, and I'm, we are particularly concerned with what is happening with medical facilities. Yet again, the only moral leadership on this issue we got was from Peter Dutton. Uh, when people talk about uh, Israel having to show restraint, it's completely and utterly the wrong time for that sort of language. It's a time to stand with the people of Israel to make sure that these women and children in particular are recovered from what is a very dire situation. Peter Dutton also called for a national cabinet to deal with anti-Semitism in this country. That was ignored by Labor and the Greens. Here, by the way, is a sign on a wall. No, it's not Berlin in 1938, but it's Sydney in 2023. Clearly, we do have a problem with anti-Semitism in this country. And may I tactfully opine that that problem is not entirely unlinked to large-scale immigration from certain strictly Islamic countries. But Labour simply refuses to acknowledge or treat anti-Semitism with the seriousness it deserves, equating it instead with the concept of Islamophobia. And Labour is bringing in half a million more people from overseas, the highest intake we've ever had. Well, John Howard disagrees, saying on Friday night at a visit to a synagogue that he is ashamed of the way the Jewish community has been treated in recent weeks and that, quote, all decent Australians feel, that, feel the same. Share that shame. Well said, John. A Prime Minister who is not afraid to show moral leadership in his time and still. And finally, allow me to also point to my friend Miranda Devine, who summed it up very simply this week in a tweet. 
Quote from Miranda, war is hell, but it really isn't hard to know which side to support. And it's not the one that bakes a baby alive in an oven, gang rapes women and hacks an injured man's head off with a shovel. End of quote. Well said, Miranda. Certainly no lack of moral clarity there either. I simply say to Australians, the Albanese government has shown itself to be reckless on anti-Semitism, ignorant of the values of mainstream Australia and incapable of moral leadership, devolving that role instead to Peter Dutton. The next election cannot come soon enough.